Women need men like fish need a bicycle. This is the basic motto of the modern feminist movement. Their idea is that women have no need of men because they can and should do everything a man does. Yet, feminists claim that women can't do everything men do because they are held back in our nation by a male patriarchy. And their solution to this is to level the playing field. They say that there's a glass ceiling above women, keeping them down, where they can see those more successful above them, but they themselves can't reach that level of success. And the feminists, to try to solve this, have many ideas that they use to promote the advancement of women in America. But when you look seriously at the facts behind these ideas, you see that they are actually very misleading. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. But before I get into it, let me give you a brief history of the feminist movement. It began in the mid-19th century when women worked for the right to vote, and they got that right in 1920. But then another movement was sparked in the 60s by a woman named Betty Friedan. She wrote a book titled The Feminine Mystique. In this book, she basically aired her grievances about feeling trapped in her home. And she assumed other women in America felt the exact same way as her. So she made her personal problem political. And that is where we get the modern feminist movement today. Two of their basic ideas are that one, women are victims, particularly in the workplace. And second, that men and women are no different other than their reproductive systems. I want to take you through each of these ideas and show you how they are actually misleading. Let's begin with their first idea, that women are victims in the workplace. Feminists claim that women can't make it as far in their careers because of the male patriarchy, that they are held back. But if that's true, how do they explain women like Meg Whitman, who is the former CEO of eBay and worth $2 billion? Or what about women like Oprah Winfrey, who now owns her own TV network and is worth almost $3 billion. These women have gone above and beyond in their careers, and they've surpassed many men in their fields. Now, we've all probably also heard the famous statistic that women only make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. But when you look at the facts behind those numbers, you see that this statistic is very misleading. The fact is that, in general, men in America are more likely to work overtime than women. In addition to this, men are more likely to take the more dangerous and unpleasant jobs that pay more, and typically these are jobs that women don't want. These two factors combined is what makes it seem like there's a pay gap in our nation. But the fact is that we have equal pay for equal work. And this is due to the Equal Pay Law that was passed in 1963. And that law is still enforced today by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. So once you look at all the facts, you can see that the feminists claim that women are victims in the workplace doesn't quite hold up. Now let's move on to their second claim, that men and women are no different other than their reproductive systems. Women, or feminists in particular, want us to believe this because they want us to think that women can do everything a man can do, and women can do it a little bit better. Well, why does one sex have to be better than the other, though? There are clear differences between men and women that make women better at some things and men better at other things. I just want to walk you through three of those differences today. I got these all from psychology.com. It's a website where scientists post their findings. So the first difference is a cognitive one. Before birth, according to the website, males and females are already developing differently. Males develop few verbal centers in the left hemisphere of their brain, whereas women develop many verbal centers in both hemispheres. And that's why when we get older, women like to use more words to describe things. Now, the second difference is also cognitive. Males use more gray matter in their brain, and this is what is responsible for connecting the information and action processing centers. It is what makes men highly focused on a single task at a time and gives them what we might call tunnel vision. It's why when your father or brother or husband is working, 
he's very zoned in on that and has a lot of trouble paying attention to much else. Now women on the other hand use more white matter in their brain. This is what is responsible for connecting the processing centers. It is what makes women uh, able to easily transition from one task to the next. Now the last difference I want to share with you today is a chemical difference. Men have more testosterone in their body. This makes them more physically aggressive and this is why they have traditionally been the better protector and providers in the home. Women on the other hand have more of a chemical called oxytocin. This is a bonding chemical that bonds women to both their mates and their children. And this is what makes women the better nurturers in the home and why traditionally they have been the caretaker of um, the kids in the home. Now, you can see that there are clear differences between men and women. So the feminists claim that men and women are virtually the same is simply not true. The stated goal of feminism is to level the playing field between the sexes. But we just briefly learned that the playing field really doesn't need to be leveled I want to challenge you to not blindly accept the modern mantra of feminism, but instead critically evaluate the facts for yourself like we did briefly today. We learned that first, women are in fact not victims in the workplace, and second, there are many differences between men and women that far surpass simply just the reproductive system. So, fish may not need a bicycle, but Women need men, and men need women. I submit to you that the modern American woman has broken through the glass ceiling. Thank you.